Welcome back everyone to another episode of Mumbles. Today I'm here bringing you guys another game review. And the game that we'll be reviewing today is City of Brass. Now before we get into anything I have to say, to those of you that are new to the channel, welcome! I hope you have an enjoyable viewing experience. For those of you that are return, repeat visitors, welcome back guys! I hope you guys are all having a great day and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Now, I do have to ask you, please, if you haven't already, do subscribe, do click that little notification bell to stay up to date with my videos. And finally, if you would like to follow me on Twitter, I do have a Twitter name. I'm going to put it down here somewhere around here so that you guys can find it and follow me. And this is just a great way to keep up to date with me, what I'm doing, maybe even communicate something to me. So do check that out if you like. And yeah, now let's get into the game review. Now today we're reviewing City of Brass. So what is City of Brass? Basically this is a first person hack and slash game set in an Arabian Nights type atmosphere. Now this game does have some RPG elements that I'll talk more about later in the review, but that's basically what you can expect from this game. First person hack and slash. So let's talk about the graphics, the soundtrack, and the controls. First off, the graphics in this game. The graphics in this game are very well done. The atmosphere that they put you in really does live up to that, you know, Arabian Nights, Aladdin type feel. And the graphics really pay off and show just that. They're nice, they're shiny, and they're very well done on the Xbox One. Now the soundtrack in this game, I gotta be honest, I kinda wish that they had focused more on a Arabian Nights type soundtrack theme. Now what do I mean by this? If you guys ever seen Aladdin and you know the music of Aladdin, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Or maybe even Prince of Persia type music. That's kind of what I'm talking about. I just kind of wish that the music was more focused on that. So now control wise, really they did a nice job with the controls. The basic commands in this game are movement, obviously. Then you have your sword, which you can use to slice at enemies. And finally you have a whip, which can be used to not only stun enemies, but it can also be used to drag enemies towards you as well as be used to grab things that are out of your reach, such as gold or treasure, something like that. Overall, the controls all work together very nicely. They did a great job of the controls, and I have to give them an A++ in this section. Now, gameplay-wise, as I already alluded to, the, this game is a hack and slash. Basically, when you go into it, your ultimate goal is to kill everybody and get through the level. Now, how can you do that? You have your sword to slice at enemies, you have your whip to grab enemies, or grab gold, or stun enemies, and then slash. And you have various traps. So you can actually scheme and set up, oh, I know there's a, there's a floor spikes here. So I'm going to draw that enemy with my whip. I'm going to yank him into the trap. Boom, dead. So there is that aspect to City of Brass. There is some thinking that is involved in this game. It's not just fully on, ah, oh, it's hacking, slashing, hacking, slashing. No, no, no. There is some strategy involved in that. Now, another thing I wanted to address, as I said, there are RPG elements to this game. Now, what do I mean by that? As you progress through City of Brass, you will find various pieces of gold or treasure or things like that, and you can use this gold to trade in for various moves. Now, I'm going to talk more about this in the con section. But this part isn't very well explained. Like what things do when you buy them isn't very well explained at times, which is a little disappointing. I'll talk more about that in the con section. But basically, as you buy these things, they do different, they have different abilities, but they do different things. Maybe it's stun an enemy longer or do certain things to an enemy. So there is that RPG type element to this game. So that is the basic RPG elements to this game. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that this game has levels that are randomly generated. What do I mean by that? Basically, you'll never play the same level twice. So let's say you're going through level, do, 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 and you die. Normally, in most games, I would think, I know not to make that mistake next time. I know that this, such and such an enemy is going to be here. Uh, uh, uh. City of Brass always changes the level design and layout of the enemies each time you play it. So you're going to get a different experience each time you play it. So that kind of takes out some of the strategy, but it also adds an interesting element to the game in which you will never get the same thing twice. So it kind of spices up the gaming experience. So that's really what you can expect from the gameplay of this game. Not a lot here, not a lot to talk about. Let's get to the cons. 
The first con that I have for this game is no story. This, this game could have benefited so much from a simple story. Just to tell me what I'm doing. I hate it when games give you no idea what you're doing or why you're doing it. It takes two minutes to put in a cutscene to tell you, you know, this is what you're doing and why you're doing it. You're saving a princess or whatever. And they didn't do it. So it's kind of like, okay, I'm just here hacking and slashing because, you know, random skeletons are attacking me. My second con is the enemy selection. There's not a lot of different enemies in this game. You will run into pretty much the same enemies over and over and over and over and over. Again and again and again. So they could have done a little bit better with mixing up the enemies. My third con to this game is the repetitiveness. This game is rather repetitive. You do the same thing over and over. You hack and slash, hack and slash, use your whip, 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 hack and slash. This game can get rather, rather repetitive and with only 12 levels, it doesn't offer a lot in terms of different gaming experiences. Now the final con that I have is the RPG elements of this game. Now, what do I mean by this? For example, when you go to buy a new item in this game with your gold, a lot of times they don't do a very good job of explaining exactly what you're buying. So until you figure out, oh, this does this and this does that, you're really kind of guessing. So with all that in mind, what is City of Brass going to get on our Mumbles review? This game, I had such high hopes for it, but they just did a lot of things that I didn't like, guys. I needed a story for it especially so that I had a reason to want to play it. Like, some games can work. Like, for example, a Trials type game where you're riding a bike and you're trying to get from point A to point B. It doesn't need a story because it's just a simple game. But in a game like this, where you're killing all these enemies for seemingly no reason, it's kind of like, why? So with that in mind, I gotta be honest with my game review. I'm gonna give City of Brass a five out of 10 on our mobiles review. It's got some nice gameplay elements to it. The hack and slash works seamlessly, but it also has some things that draw back from the experience, and I just wish they could have fixed some of those things. Anyways, guys, this has been another episode of Mumbles. I want to thank you guys all so, 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 so much for joining us. Please smack that subscribe button, smack that like button, and smack all those buttons. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.